Fisker might just be the most underappreciated EV automaker in 2024. And to be completely honest, after reviewing the business's financials, as well as the product offering and where it fits in, a lot of this is way overdone. It seems to me that there is a bias in the journalist space against new companies that are trying to disrupt a specific market. I'm not saying that Fisker is going to be the next Tesla or the next General Motors. However, we should give credit to a company that came out of the ashes over a decade ago and a CEO who is tied towards an important impact with decarbonizing vehicles. And particularly more recently, we've seen a lot more scrutiny around the financials of Fisker after their latest earnings report, as well as some of the software bugs that the company has faced with launching its first car that for some reason are dissuading buyers and those on social media from believing in the company's product vision. And in this video, I want to explain why those people are gravely mistaken. If you go to really any media outlet, you'll see that they're really fast at reporting the billion dollar losses that a company like Fisker is experiencing at a time when they're ramping production. Now, obviously, nobody likes to see losses, but many fail to realize that that is an important part of the process for any startup on earth. These companies have to spend money to make money. And that is exactly why they also happen to provide some of the best returns for investors in the long run because of their high risk, high reward nature. The total addressable market for the auto industry is massive. And particularly with the technological advancements of electrified powertrains, companies can make more profit per vehicle than they ever did in the past. And that is unfortunately something everybody underappreciates about the EV startup business. Yeah, Fisker had a net loss of $700 million for the full year 2022. But what the media outlets won't tell you is the fact that they pulled in roughly $275 million in revenue in that same time with a net loss of just 102 putting their profit margin at negative 25%. Fisker only started delivering the ocean in the fourth and third quarters of 2023, which means by spending roughly $700 million, they gained an annualized revenue of just around $450 million. And for anybody who knows anything about startups over the past few years, that is an incredible return on their investment. Even Lucid Motors, which has been selling cars for a much longer period of time, has only around $550 million in analyzed revenue. And these guys sell cars that are much more expensive than the ocean. And what's super interesting here is the fact that the ocean is competing against the best selling car segment for EVs over the past two years, which is the Model Y. And in many metrics, as you can see right here, it actually beats it quite considerably with a cheaper starting price. Yeah, sure, the company recently filed a going concern warning in their annual letter, which is something every company that is facing a certain expense versus their capital position has to file. Tesla, as a matter of fact, filed its own going concern statement on which the Fisker stock is down 34% in 2018. And the company, as far as I can tell, is doing just fine today. The point isn't that this is a new Tesla competitor. The point is that discrimination when it comes to coverage needs to be addressed. And there's no better example of that than MKBHD calling the ocean the worst car he had ever reviewed. And with 4 million views on his video, you'd think that he'd have some really good points about why it might actually be a really bad car to own. But after watching the entire 15 minute video, as far as I could tell, the main issues he was concerned about 
with software bugs with the Bluetooth, the key fob, or even the cameras working on the screen. Yeah, sure, as a customer, obviously that is not a good thing, but he also goes on to mention that this car actually has a really compelling design, really good fit and finish, and a back seat row that is basically best in class. Basically, every single one of the bugs he mentioned could have been fixed with an over their ear update, and they, as a matter of fact, were, according to the Fisker engineering team. Now, as for the question why that kind of bug was still allowed on this production model, nobody really knows, and it's certainly something that the engineering team at Fisker is going to take into consideration when launching a product in the future. But to me, it's pretty clear that his video title revolves much more about the experience of reviewing the car than what the actual car offers as a vehicle. MKBHD is a tech YouTuber at the end of the day, and he is much more inclined on reviewing the technology, the software, and all the features and glamour that revolves around an EV than actual practicality or design considerations. But unfortunately, as we can see in the media today, those kinds of clickbaity titles get revolved and thrown around like wildfire. Not to mention the fact that the vehicle that Marquez was reviewing was the Fisker Ocean 1, which is essentially the launch or even pre-production model of the car that some dealer in New Jersey apparently had access to. And so chances are it could have been a pretty costly, in this case, oversight for the Fisker software team. As for what are the actual challenges the company faces from a business perspective, they primarily revolve around funding as well as improving their profitability. You see, the company booked a really good strategy of contract manufacturing its cars from a supplier called Magna in Europe. This has allowed the company to access the market much faster and also preserve its profit margins without having to spend a lot of capital on building a factory from the ground up. But this also comes at the cost of extended shipping costs from Europe to the US, which also eats into bottom line profitability. And because the company is kind of on of its own right now, since it's public offering, the company needs to raise additional cash and get access to that EV tax credit from the IRA. And the only real way to do that is by investing in North America whether that be through a joint venture with a big automaker like Nissan or by building their own workforce and factory in the state. Yeah, sure, if costs start to skyrocket and competition phases out the company in the U.S., then certainly there's risks associated with that. But the reality, in my opinion, is much better than what the media is portraying around this company. Starting any company isn't easy, and Fisker is trying its best at its resources. But as you folks, that is just my take on the situation. Let me know your thoughts down on Fisker in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.